Dear ladies and gentlemen, my name is Markus Eider. I'm a research assistant here at Degendorf Institute of Technology. I present you the topic evaluation of machine learning algorithms for the prediction of simulated parking space occupancy. To start with the topic, I want to highlight the background. As we know, there are thousands of commuters every day in each city. However, we also know that the number of cars is increasing worldwide and that there is a lack of parking spots, especially at companies where the people are working. When we think of electrification of the transport, we see that uh, those people then require charging possibilities in order to get home again. However, these charging stations are lacking, of course, as well. Therefore, the people need reservations. With regards to reservations, companies have difficulties. They at first need to know how much vehicles will arrive throughout the day in order to enable reservations. Otherwise, they would double book some parking spots. And in order to derive the number of arriving vehicles throughout the day, companies need prediction models with regards to parking space occupancy. On the right side of the slide, you can see a scheme of a company building and parking spots and I highlighted the user groups which we consider in this paper. These are visitors, employees and also the fleet vehicles of the company used by employees. I do not want to recite the related work of our paper, but basically we identified four different models from machine learning which we want to train and evaluate on data regarding parking space occupancy. These are, for example, decision trees and neural networks. These models will be fed with three input parameters. These are day of week, daytime, and is weekend. All three are standardized floating point values between zero and one. Also, we have an output, which is the occupancy per user group, uh, which is also a floating point value representing a percentage of occupancy. In order to get comparable data for model training and evaluation, we chose distribution functions from statistics and used them for the user groups. First, the employees. We have 10 vehicles, which we assume in the paper. These arrive usually at 8 a.m. From Monday to Thursday, they depart at 5 p.m. and Friday a little bit earlier at 2 p.m. Also, there should be a variance of two hours in order to get more realistic. You can see an example of arrivals on the right bottom of the slide. So for example, people arrive at eight, but there also should be a variance between seven and nine a.m. However, we want most, and in this case, 99% of all employees to arrive in this time slot. So we use Six Sigma to represent this. And the mean, of course, is eight. For the fleet, uh, we also assume these are 10 vehicles uh, which are driven by the employees, meaning that they can only depart after the employees arrived. And also their latest arrival is before the departure of the employee. This can be seen on the graph shown on the slide. So every red hatched box shows the departure of a vehicle. And also the blue boxes are the arrivals meaning that we can have one to three tours between Monday and Thursday and up to two tours on Friday. The mean value and standard deviation of each arrival and departure is calculated in the same fashion as for the employees. For the visitors, we expect to have maximum 15 vehicles which arrive at arbitrary times throughout the day. And by day, we mean the working hours of the employees. And also, we assume that they depart after one hour of a visit. In this case, we are using the Poisson distribution as this already is a good example for modeling events and also has some kind of randomness, which we want to have in this work. Overall, you can see all the occupancy values on the right side of this slide. 
On the bottom, there's the different outputs of the distribution functions. And on the top, there's the standardized values. For each user group, we are creating one CSV file. And this contains the three parameters, which are the input of the models, day of week, daytime is weekend, and also the occupancy, which is the expected value to be outputted by the models. Also, we are using a quarter hour resolution for each row and we are using one exemplary year, in this case, our current year 2021. Overall, this gives us 30,000 rows of data. In order to train and evaluate the models, we need to first prepare the CSV files. At first, we want to shuffle the files in order to prevent the models from training on a local optimum. Therefore, we are using shuffling algorithms as they are available in Linux terminal. Also, we are splitting the files in a ratio of two thirds in order to have two thirds for training and one third for evaluation. After training and evaluation, we are taking a look on the evaluation files, meaning how good was the prediction with regards to the expected occupancy values. And on this slide, we prepared four different boxes, one for each model, and there are three box plots in each box, meaning these are the different user groups. Overall, the average median values of all box plots are shown above the models, and it shows that decision trees and neural networks have quite good values and support vector machines and linear regression are performing not so well. However, if we take a closer look, the neural network has a high number of outliers behind the whiskers, uh, which nearly form quite a line of dots. And therefore we chose a second evaluation, which is the root mean square error, uh, which is a single metric describing the prediction precision, meaning that we compare all expected and predicted values in order to derive the metric. In the graph, we can see that the decision tree is performing better than the neural network, especially because of the outliers. However, we still say that overall decision trees and neural networks show a very good precision. And also, as we know, decision trees are quite simple and therefore uh, we can also say that it performs quicker than neural networks. The main contributions of this work are as following. First, we identified models, uh, simulated the occupancy with distribution functions, and then compared the models. As we just heard, both decision trees and neural networks are suited for the prediction of occupancy in the parking spots. However, there's still some work to do. At first hand, we need to use real data because the simulated data doesn't completely show the real world. And the reason for that is we do not consider any special events occurring or employee holidays, sickness, and so forth. And another point is that we used default parameters for the models and the models could be fine-tuned as well. I hope this presentation was interesting for you and if you have questions, please feel free to send me an email. Otherwise, we can discuss this presentation in our session. Thank you very much for your attention.